Hello guys, Belago here. There has been some updates to the mod manager since my last video, so I wanted to make another video to show you the new features and how to use them. If you have any questions that I don't cover here, more than likely the answers will be in the original video which I will link in the description below. So for this example, I deleted all the mods from my mods folder to give you a clean setup from start to finish. So let's go ahead and open up the mod manager here, which is now empty. To activate the new feature, you're going to go to the gear, and then you're going to see where it says File Mod Detection Enabled. That is the default mode that the manager has been using since its creation. So the way that it works was that you take your mods and place them directly in the root of your GTA mod folder, and then it would automatically add those mods to your game when you loaded them. Unfortunately though, this method did not work very well with some mods. Um, for example, GTA LUA does not work with this method, um, LSPDFR doesn't work with this method, and there's a couple of them that have additional files that unfortunately the manager wasn't compensating for, causing some people to have some issues getting mods loaded properly. So moving forward, I enabled a new feature, but it's not set to default because I don't want to change the method that it works for people who are fine with the way it works. So if you feel like you need to incorporate some mods that it doesn't work, then follow this tutorial here. So we're going to change file mod detection enabled. We're going to click it, and now it's going to say folder mod detection enabled. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we're going to go ahead and open up the mod folder. You can go ahead and delete the scripts folder if it's there. You won't need that anymore. So the way that it works now is that each mod that you want to install, you put it in its own separate subfolder. So let's go ahead and download script hook here. So I'll go ahead and download script hook again. All right, so now that I have script hook downloaded and here are the files, I'm going to create a new folder in my mod folder called script hook. I'm going to open that folder and I'm going to drag and drop the script hook files into this folder. Now that script hook's in here, if I reload, script hook lists as a mod that I can enable or disable. Remember though, pretty much every single mod requires script hook, so you always want to leave that checked if you're going to load mods. So with the script hook, native trainer is also included, but I don't want to have to always enable that every time I play. So I'm going to create a separate folder called native trainer. And I'm going to put the native trainer right in there. Now if I reload this again, now we have two mods, script hook and native trainer. You're going to do the same thing for every single mod that you had previously. And you can move the existing mods you have in here into this new format. Um, so let, let me go ahead and open up my old mod folder here real quick. So I had, this is my mods here, so I had Native Trainer, Open IV, I'm just going to put that in there. Um, what else do I have here? Los Santos Police Department First Response, I'll put that in here too. Alright, so let's go ahead and download the um, LUA plugin as well. Let's sort this by highest rated and you'll, you'll find it. LUA plugin for script hook. Okay, so for this, we're going to do the exact same thing. Let's make a new folder. I'm going to call LUA plugin. And then I'm just going to drag all the files into here. And that's it. Now it's installed. Again, inside of the LUA plugin, there's going to be some example mods in the add-ins folder. I personally would delete these since there's no reason of having those there. So let's say you want to install an actual LUA mod. So let's go ahead and do that. Do the ragdoll parkour again, and let's download that file. All right, so all your .lua files need to go into a folder called scripts slash add-on. So let's go back here, and make a new folder. Let's call it GTA Parkour. Now we have to make a new folder called scripts, a 
new folder called add-ins. And we're going to drag that in here. So we're going to follow the exact same folder path that you would normally in your Grand Theft Auto folder. Um, so the reason why I made these two folders is because if you look at the LUA plugin, there's a scripts folder and then the add-ins, and this is where you would normally put it in. But if we put them in here, it's going to automatically load all of them whenever we enable the LUA plugin. So we want to keep them separate. So each LUA mod should have its own separate subfolder. So now if we reload, we're going to have all those mods I added here listed and ready to go. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to, before I launch this, I'm going to go ahead and load up my Grand Theft Auto directory here and just show you what it looks like before and after. Alright, so here's my folder here. Um, it has all the native files. There's no mods loaded yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit single player. If you notice here, it's actually automatically loading the Rage Hook plugin instead of Grand Theft Auto. That's because I had the Los Santos Police Department first response mod enabled. That's one of the features. If Rage plugin hook.exe is listed inside of the folder, it's going to load that instead of your Grand Theft Auto game. So I'm going to hit no for this because I just I don't want to play the game. I just want to show you the files. So once again, like before, all the folders for the mods have automatically shown up here. If you open scripts, add-ins, see GTA Parkour is listed in there. And, it, and the, the folder above it has the three um, LUA files that are required for the plugin to work. So that's pretty much it. I mean, other than that, everything else is the same. It's just that now when you look in your mods folder, it's going to be a lot more organized and a lot more mods are going to work. So let me go ahead and open here real quick and go to my mods folder. Let's say um, GTA Parkour had its own random file. Let's make, up, let's make up a file here. Add in sounds, call it an mp3. So I'm making a random fake mp3 file just to have it in here. So if I load the mod again, so I'm just going to uncheck them all and just load the um, GTA Parkour just so we have one example here. I hit single player. It's going to now load GTA normally because I disabled the, the LSPDFR mod. I'm going to cancel that. GTA here. And now, if you look, the add in sound mp3 that I created before is now automatically transferred to the Grand Theft Auto 5 directory. Now if I load the manager again, hit online. We'll let this cancel again. And now if you look in here, that mp3 is gone. So is the parkour mod. So that's pretty much it. Um, RPF mods can be installed the same way as before using the import modded wizard. Um, when you do that, there will be this RPF folder, and you'll have the um, update RPF listed in here. Um, you can also add it an additional way, which is using the same format as the other mods. So if I want to add update the RPF manually, I can just make a new folder here, call it mods, make a new folder called update, and then let me go ahead and transfer a modded RPF here. Alright, so now I have that update RPF in the mods update folder. So now if I load this here, we're going to get some more mods here. So, see, for I named it mods, which was kind of a bad idea because it's going to not really describe which mod it is. So let me go ahead and fix this real quick. So let me make a new folder. If it lets me make a new folder. This is going to be... Let's say it was pedestrians. I'm just going to move that into the pedestrians folder. So we have... It is as its own mod here. So let me go ahead and refresh this one more time. And we'll have a pedestrian mod. So if I enable this and press single player... Cancel that, auto directory. It's going to make a mods update, update RPF, which now can be used by Open IV. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, there's some other features I mean that you can definitely use if you want. 
in the options is a do not download beta build. If you enable that, you'll get the latest build, even if it's not released. For the average user, I don't recommend doing that because I might release a build that might wipe out your settings. Not intentional, but it could happen. So if you're not looking to help me test, I would just leave this disabled. That's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave some messages in the comments or you can PM me on Reddit. I'm always available and I help everyone I can. So I hope you have a good day and have fun modding GTA.